Hey guys, welcome to another week. We only have a couple left, so we have begun our preparations for your final exam. And because we approach the year uh, by stepping back and taking a look at big pictures in writing and reading and connecting uh, between an audience and a writer um, and a speaker and a listener and all of this stuff, because we took a big step back this year to try to understand all of this as a whole, I thought it would have been kind of weird to tackle your reviewing with just simply, let's review this concept, now this concept, now this concept, now this concept, now this concept. And instead, I thought it'd be a lot more fun for all of us to have some discussions and to answer some questions based on our interpretation of the movie version, or I should say, a movie version of the story of Peter Pan. Now, this movie is called Hook, and I, I noticed, and the reason I chose this is because I know a lot of you probably have not seen this movie before we started watching it in class today. A few of you said, that, oh, I love this movie, but a lot of you had not seen it. But it follows a very traditional narrative structure. And because of that, because of all of the uh, subtleties, and because of all of the um, symbolism, and because of all the foreshadowing, all of the really, really great and vivid literary elements that are on display in it, I figured this would be a great story and movie to use to get the ball rolling on our um, on our review. So, I gave you this uh, review sheet that you can download at the bottom of this post, just like always, uh, and print it if you didn't get one today, or if you lost it, or whatever. Um, but, I, I glanced really quickly off of the different um, questions in uh, on your organize, or on your review sheet today in class, so I wanted to go a little bit deeper just to make sure that you understand all of the different concepts here. Um, you'll notice that I've asked you to do a, a lot of different things from predicting, inferring, drawing conclusions, all the way through, you know, analyzing plot structure and character and author's purpose, main idea, and support. So all of our bases are covered here. So I really want you to make sure you're focusing deeply on these particular questions and the concepts behind them and that you're thinking very carefully. This isn't just happy, fun time, movie day uh, for the next three days. This is focused, intense review of what our job is as an audience of narrative. So, here we go. Question number one, I say, make some predictions about the story based on the cover art and the opening sequence. Well, I showed you that cover art, and a lot of you made the connection right away. Oh, Peter Pan, Peter Pan, I've got this, okay, this story is in my head now. Oh, but it looks a little bit different, and it... So a lot of you were doing a lot of really good predicting from that. Also, the opening sequence, when the family is there watching a production of the stage play of Peter Pan. And I asked you to, to make some predictions about the story based on some of the characters and the limited amount we know them, plus the cover art. Remember, we make predictions to set a purpose for our reading. It just makes us uber-focused as, we, as we're going through and as we're experiencing whatever it is we're supposed to experience, whether it's um, before we read, before we listen, before we think, before we experience. Whatever it is, we prepare ourselves, and that allows us to get the most possible out of something. Question two, it says, where does the rising action begin? I say, hint, think main conflict. Remember, when we're talking about plot structure, Main conflict is what launches the rising action. It is the inciting incident, it's sometimes called. Um, and I'm not going to give away the answer here, but we did view the two scenes that really established what the main conflict was and began the rising action. So that happened today in class while we were watching. Uh, what do the marbles symbolize? We're talking about Toodles here when he says, I've lost my marbles. What do the marbles symbolize? Remember, a symbol is something that represents something else, some larger idea or some larger thing. Um, but it's a token, it's a symbol. Why can't Peter remember who he is? This one I'm asking you to do a little bit of inferring here. Um, we don't get an exact answer here. We get a lot of evidence that we need to put together. Remember, that's what an inference is. A prediction an inference and a conclusion are all the same things. It's just when we do them that makes them different. Predictions, we're still predicting an end, but we don't have very much information to go off of. Inference, kind of in the middle of things, so we've got some information, but we're not sure yet. When we're drawing a conclusion, we've got all of the information, we just have to put it all together. So again, we're inferencing here. Why can't Peter remember who he is? 
Then the next is pretty simple. List a conflict of each type. I put man versus, but I gave that qualifier. When we're talking about man versus, we're not talking about a man. We're talking about human. Okay, human. Um, anybody who's experiencing a conflict. So, uh, man versus self, man versus man, man versus nature, man versus society. You just have to give an example of each. Remember, man versus self is internal conflict. The other three are external conflicts. Man and man, human, human. Man versus nature, the elements, gravity, whatever it is. Uh, man versus society, um, a lot of times it has to do with an idea that people are rebelling against or um, breaking away from norms or, or that sort of thing. Stuff we've talked about throughout the course of the year. Okay, moving on to the back. What is the climax that leads to the overall resolution of the story? Who makes the decision and why? Because remember, a climax when we're talking about a story is a decision that's made, a turning point, a point of no return where everything that happens after that decision is made, whether it's made by a main character or for the main character by another force or another character, it leads us inevitably to our resolution. So what is the climax and uh, who makes it, who makes the decision, why do they make that decision, how does it affect the resolution? Obviously we're not there yet, we're not going to be there till the very end, but Keep that in mind that that's what I'm looking for there. What's that big decision point, that tipping point, that point of no return that makes the rest of the story have to happen the way it does? What is the significance of the sword? Again, I'm asking you about symbolism, but I'm also asking you about the overall idea of the movie because you're going to see there's a sword that comes into play that gets passed around from person to person, and there's a big time significance that goes along with it, but it requires us to really have a full understanding of the story. So this is going to be kind of like drawing a conclusion, but also using a bit of symbolism in there. Uh, 8, 9, and 10 are really only ones that we can answer after the fact, so we'll be working on these and discussing these a little bit more on Thursday when we actually finish the last couple minutes of the movie that are going to tail over into Thursday. So question 8 is, based on your knowledge of characters, conflict, and re resolution, what do you think the main idea of this movie is? How does the action support it? So again, I'm looking for main idea and supporting details. Now we all know that because of the four biggies, the the way that character interacts with plot, conflict, and resolution, how it creates themes. It's not until afterwards that we can analyze those themes, those things that kept coming up over and over and over again, that we really see how they've changed the main character. And that big time change is usually the main idea. So keep an eye out for that. Number nine, who is the intended audience of this movie? Could there be multiple audiences? Sure. But I'm asking about who do you think the audience was. This allows you to do some critical thinking of your own and also analyze audience which we've been doing all year. Did the filmmakers do a good job of connecting with, the, with that audience? Remember, it's all about connection. Could you understand it enough? Could that audience understand it enough in order to make that connection? And why could they or why couldn't they? Why didn't the filmmakers do a good job or why did they? Last but not least, did you like this interpretation of the story of Peter Pan? Why or why not? How could the filmmakers have made it better? Now I'm asking you to get creative. I'm asking you to think about how would you construct something like this? How would you tell this story? Because remember, as audiences change, and as content changes, and as our purpose changes, so does the story. Guys, hopefully you're seeing here that this is like our year to a T. This is the stuff that we've been talking about all year long. I hope that it's all coming back to you and I hope that you enjoy really watching this movie and really being a true audience member that's critically thinking about all of these things in their review. I hope that really allows you to enjoy this movie to the fullest extent because it's a great, great film. See you guys tomorrow.